One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobottle.com. Okay. So my rear engine mount is bad. Predicted by one of my dear subscribers. Thank you. I wasn't even trying to find that. But it turned out to be the case. I brake torqued it in reverse and drive. And that was a mess. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend taking these off. You just have to take apart where the bushings for the sway bar is. And a bar that comes off of that. And another set of bolts I'll show you that come off of that. But these guys are coming off because they've got play. I don't know what to call them by... Uh, the English standard before I learned the American one. Thanks to YouTube. As in English English, not American English. Hope you forgive my dog rustling around in the background. Uh, she's she's kicked out of the house right now. Alright, so 14 millimeter on the sway bar end links. Uh, there is a way with a uh, Allen to work inside of that spot with bolts on the out, you know, like a uh, box handle on the outside or crescent wrench, whatever you got, but usually you can just get lucky and blast them off with a 14 impact. Not going to get lucky, you got to do it the hard way. Well, at least I knocked them loose. So I'm going back with the uh, other tools. Okay, that's convenient. So, this is also a 14. Those Allens are going to have to wait. I left them at work or in the house where I can't be for the next hour safely. 14 is to take off this sway bar support bar. Alright, now that I got the jack out of the way. Don't worry, I'm understands. It's safe. Ah! Gotta do one of those on each side. Okay. So, now that we got that going, turns out it's actually, I believe, a 17 on this side, if I could see correctly. It's a bit dim to read black on black. Those neat in the side. Don't run into trouble later with them. And what I've got next is these big guys. I gotta switch my deep impacts for that. But the small ones make it easier when you have little space. Next, we got a dog who's gonna lay down next to me while I work. She may or may not interfere with the shot. We'll see. She's nuzzling my ear. She's a sweet little girl. Okay, so this is 19 for the next layer. So the bar was on top, was on this with the 14 and 17, and we got a 19 underneath. And that, at which point we'll be able to release two more bolts and get this whole thing down. Did not expect a bunch of juice to be in there. I guess it makes sense, because that is from... Uh, all that cleanup I was doing. I bet this, all this slime is all that cleanup I was doing. I don't know if this is solvent or water or. I know there's oil in there too. Because I was doing so much cleanup. Gosh, I didn't know stuff could get in there. Well, better use some blue Loctite when I put it back together so that it doesn't uh, rust. Thankfully, I did this now instead of later. So, staying true to form, not loose things as I pull them apart. Keeping these things together. Oh, wrong end. Because potentially it could be a long time before I put this back together. Since who knows when they're going to wake up and get my family running on two cars again.
That's the dog named Baby outside, missing my dog probably. Since I brought him inside. Okay, what's next? This is actually set up as a pressure fitting. I mean, it is a lot of work to get it just right. And then I got two more big pieces here and back here to take. And it looks like it's going to be a 19 again, so I'll just keep that out. Oh no, I'm not touching that one. Silly me. That would be a bad day if I had to put a control arm back in. There is definitely a lot of water in there. I want to know why. Because that is not cool. There's a tab back here that if you don't set just right there we go this tab right here that has to set in and then it pressure fits up on here and trust me it is a muscle filled job to get that tab underneath this slot back here and get that on there comes off easy goes on hard but that pressure is important I'll show you the tab that pressure is important because if you don't have it pressurized your car is sloppy I know this because I put it together without putting that tab in thinking oh big whoop well guess what big whoop we really affected handling so you gotta have that just how it's supposed to be how it's meant to be all right, so I believe these are 19s. No, they're 17s. And I had a lot of fun working with those. Because every time I, I touch anything, liquid starts falling out at me. And I was freaking out because I've never lived in a place with so much rain. But then I realized what was going on. I smelled it. And I smelled this, uh, a weak scent of cleaner mostly it evaporated but uh, I did a lot of degreasing under here after that oil leak and I think some of that cleaner just got up into the bolts everywhere and it was just sitting with like a thin layer of oil and mostly cleaner everywhere I looked but here's the bad motor mount we're after and I don't know if Toyota Village is ever going to send me the part it's been more than half a month and all they've changed their status is, is yes we have confirmed the customer wants it joy so my plan is to fill it in with window weld it's normally a race modification um, I never planned to go quite that route that's kind of where I'm at now there's uh, three bolts that hold it on underneath that I already told you about. And you see some of that cleaner that's left over. And up in here, coming this way from the back of the car, there should be three more bolts to deal with. See, it just keeps dripping. And at that point, I don't think you really have a way to get it out. In the meantime, I've got the engine propped up with something that can't move yeah I've got three other good motor mounts but you can't be too careful besides if you keep this from moving much um, it makes it a lot easier to line things up on the reinstall now what sucks is I had to pull all that strut bar off that I got laying over there neatly organized so I don't lose anything well, mostly neatly organized. Um, but I'm thinking I have to pull the full subframe. And that's not as safe as I thought. I might need more safety here. 
because I just realized I'm not taking out one motor mount, I'm taking out two to get this done. So I'm seeing this motor mount is sitting on this and this, which means this would have to pull, which means my two primary forward and back motor mounts would be no longer holding up the engine, and that's bad. Oh, and check that out. Let's see if I can get you in there. That's rusting through. I need a front motor mount too. Wow, I'm losing my front motor mount. Normally I see the rubbers go, but all the metal's given. Yeah. That's a lot of metal that's gone. I need a new front too. Dang it. Well, this project has doubled its price. Well, we'll see it in a little while if it's necessary. But uh, since I have to pull the front motor mount as well, this whole tongue underneath definitely has to go. I'll still have a transmission mount that's uh, underneath the air intake, if I had a stock air intake still, up above, and one over here. But I still have something holding up the engine to be safe, and I might want to do even more with that. There's a tongue that's used for towing that I pulled. Oh, oh, O'Reilly's discount auto parts. Okay. <laughs> so you've got this tongue that comes out of those two bolts and it's meant for towing. So I've just got that neatly set aside and I also pulled the 10 millimeter piece that's holding this plastic in and this plastic in. I put this one back and this one back in an odd place just to have it out of the way. And I had to do a little bit of a trick that I'll show you. Sometimes these are damaged and they don't quite work out. I assure you it is a 14 millimeter, but one of these I had to thought it was 15 and I tried it and oh I started around it and it just spun it was bad. I assure you they are 14's. What I had to do on one of them, I had to take this and it would just barely start to go on less than that and you can use your impact sockets to reshape things. Sometimes they become one and you might have to take a punch to get it back out. Well, things were getting unsafe. Remember where I said where that tongue sits? Well, I've moved the subframe a little bit further, and when I went to see what else was holding it in place, I discovered this bolt was totally loose already. So, my one of my motor mounts was half coming off. Wow, that's so unsafe. That motor mount was starting to be held to the subframe with one less bolt. Okay, so there's a 17 that I've got to pull to release this motor mount from how it's held in through that space right there. I was talking incorrectly when I said that I had a pull bolt behind where it actually attaches to the back of the engine. No, I gotta pull that too. No, I don't. That bracket's part of the engine, so to speak, so once I break that loose with my breaker bar, I'll, I'll work it with my uh, uh, ratcheting box handle, uh, 17, get that uh, pulled out all the way, and this should go up and out, except it won't quite clear, because of these studs are too long. Um, anyway, I'll get it figured out. That's what I'm working on right now. But I thought you needed to see 
that bolt that goes through and how it pulls. In Russia, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And uh, this is the same length as my breaker bar. It's got a flex head on it. And I got to tell you, I don't know if I could have ever broken that free with a half inch drive. For the record, you got one of these sway bars off. Install it up to the frame first. Get all those pressure fittings that I talked about earlier just right. See all that goo still in there from all the cleaning I did? And then when you're ready to do this part, you can do this part next. But in case you didn't know, the trick to these is you could spin forever. See how the center spins? Or you could get an Allen key. Or I can show off my new electric tool that I really love. It's, it's both gentle and fast. And voila, you got it off easy. It was kind of dramatic. I'm sorry I missed the moment where the whole thing fell down as this came off. But I'm getting new ones from Car ID. And they usually come with new nuts. But you never know when you need another nut, right? The new ones will be stiff. Mevotex actually considered an upgrade. If you live in Canada, you should love them because you can redo them. They're made much sturdier and stronger than stock. When I put them on the back, it's one of the rare moments where I made a slight improvement on the car. My wife was like, wow, that's wonderful. Okay, maybe that wasn't a slight improvement. <laughs> so I've had a few supply issues this year. Okay. Um, I can't for the life of me get a knock sensor for my truck. Eleven months later, uh, I finally give up. Okay, now a few months ago they did manage to get it to me, but I moved to this new house that you've seen. And, um, I didn't manage to tell them, oh, don't send it to the old house, and some guy stole it. Okay, so, you know, life sucks sometimes. Um, they were kind enough to give me a store credit. Obviously, they didn't give me a refund because, you know, I, I'm i telling them that it got stolen at the old address. They just kind of happened to go on me for that. But anyway, they're going to get me those Melotex, and I'm going to like it. They're going to be awesome. Okay. But we've discovered the front motor mount's going the metal is actually rusting out. I actually could wire brush it and re-weld it to strength and I frankly will if uh, I can safely run my welder on a bunch of extension cords. Normally you shouldn't do that. But Toyota Village as OEM is OEM is supposed to be awesome because this is a second time to do this in a few years. Um, I'm really hoping that I've dissembled enough the car for some window well on my box. The shear strength is the best I could do, okay? And that's okay. I His car is four times faster than mine. I think we can handle that. But this was the middle of the night idea when I pulled half an all-nighter. And uh, if I can window weld it while it's in there, I frankly will. Let's take a look. Now I'm sure that's hardened up, but you know, with it just a little bit of rubber damage, if I completely fill that with window weld, I bet I can pull that off, though uncomfortable, without fully re disassembling a car. I apologize, that does mean you don't get a video on how to do that. But I promise you there's already a video on that that's extremely boring. If you can suffer through it, you'll know how. Okay, so the sole subframe has to come. So I'm going to pull the three bolts to hold the steering knuckle in because the control arm's coming down. And I have to pull the bolt back here. 
all those bolts are already pulled those are already pulled so those, that has to come this guy has to come off and of course the three bolts holding the control arm on the opposite side have to come just like these three not this one but these three so take care of that on both sides take care of that big one and that big one and that should cover it I don't think those bolts yeah the bolts on the end those don't have to come because that's part of the subframe alright so you have your full control arm I've pulled all the bolts on each side the front motor mounts actually out all it is is just removing a bunch of bolts through here and also the bolt the bolt through the center but I was surprised that I had to hold it from the back side it's got a bolt and nut assembly and then we have a bolt here you know those wire in there they can really add up that's one of the advantages of going to work and being a pro um, customers only want to pay for one thing you never get distracted from getting that one thing done for them ever <laughs> engine rebuilding well while I'm in there to do this what you really need a, a budget and stick to it or understand that it's gonna drag out for a long time <laughs> remember get out there and work on something